In the previous episode, we started our epic adventure, taking the Enhancement Shaman to Keystone Hero. It felt like we made a slow start, however, with all of the changes, I think we're on the right track. But today, we're on a mission. A mission to acquire our new foreset, obtain the mighty Fawncaller Claw, and finally jump into some Mythic Plus. We start today with an item level of 475, and our score currently sits at 0. Before I opened the vault, I decided to run as much raid content as I could, to see if I could get my hands on some tier pieces. If I could get one piece from the raid and another from the vault, I'd be set, as it's now week 2, which means I'll have two charges of the Catalyst. I jumped into LFR, and let's just say this was pretty fast. I know it's only LFR, but that was insane. And of course, I was nowhere to be seen on the damage meters. I picked up a belt, my second bronze bullion, and then we took down Rashok and the tear legs dropped. This was my chance. I rolled a 97 and my heart started to race. And then I think it stopped when it tied. It all came down to a 50-50. But sadly, for the other shaman, of course, those tear legs favored me. Oh baby, we're on our way. And that was LFR, a good way to start the day. I went and took down the world boss, nothing from this guy. Then I went and completed this week's Valdraken Weekly. This time I had to protect the researchers in Zaralek Caverns, complete a time rift, and loot a secured shipment. Which is pretty easy when you just leech off of other players, thanks for that. After that I decided to try my luck and see if I could get into a normal raid, which didn't actually take very long. I didn't have full hopes of clearing this place, but if I could get a piece of tier or something else, I really didn't care. Not to mention that all of the crests I would be gaining from doing this would be really good for upgrading gear. We took down Cagney, not as fast as last time, and the axe dropped. Well, this would be a huge upgrade. I rolled a 48 and I was pretty confident I'd lose this one, which I did. I won the braces though. I won a chess piece from Amalgamation, and as I'm stood here waiting for the group to be filled, this happened. I'm actually really shocked. Florence, you're probably not watching this, but if you are, you're awesome. Thank you. After a grueling hour and 45 minutes and a couple of wipes on Sark, we finally cleared this place. And I picked up some new shoes too. With all of that complete, it was finally time to open all of the caches I'd acquired and then open the vault. From the cache of embers, we looted a veteran mace, yet another weapon. Oh, but it gets even better because we then open the cache of awakened embers and we loot the same bloody weapon. Really? At least one of them's champion, I guess. But I also plan on spending my bullions on a weapon. How many weapons will we loot today? Aye, aye, aye. All right, now it's time to open our first vault of the season. A proper vault this time, I promise. And from the vault, we have the options of veteran tier hands, a veteran helm, another veteran helm, hero shoulders, a hero neck, and some veteran boots. Before I decide what to take from the vault, it's worth noting that I have tier legs in my bags. Along with this, we have two charges of the catalyst. So if I were to take tier hands from the vault, I would then have the new four set, which would be a massive upgrade to the current set, in terms of item level anyway. So I headed over to the catalyst to make sure I could actually convert the gear, as I was aware of a bug when trying to convert gear from the time walking weekly. Yeah, it just didn't work. For some reason, I couldn't convert the shoulders, so I converted a hero helm and a champion chest. I then returned to the vault and chose the tier hands. I consumed the LFR token for veteran tier legs, and my new shiny four set was complete. Next thing on the list was to spend my antique bronze bullion. So I flew over to the vendors, located just here in Valdraken, if anyone was wondering, and I picked up a fawn caller claw. Oh boy, this was exciting. After that, I upgraded what I could. Obviously, the Fawn Caller was the main priority. I gemmed and enchanted near enough everything, apart from the belt because screw those prices, man. And this took our total item level up to 492. Oh, I did enchant my legs after this, by the way. I thought I'd just quickly mention that now before any pitchforks are raised. I even gemmed my Season 3 neck that has really bad stats for me, but I don't really have another one. It was now time to jump in to some Mythic Plus for the very first time on the Enhancement Shaman. I picked up my very first key from Lynn Dormy, and she gave me an Algafer Academy plus two. I formed the group inviting a bunch of friends, and we began. I wanted to start the season well. I also wanted to make a good impression, especially as I'd just gotten an epic weapon and the new foreset. We made our way to the overgrown ancient, and I chilled on my DPS as I didn't want to pull aggro and die. But for the life of me, don't ask me why I did this. Sometimes there's a lot of colors, 
my eyes struggle to tell them apart, not to mention my ADHD which basically acts like an additional affix, but I have no excuse for this one. 52 seconds into the key? That was a quick one. And yes, she may have said this from time to time. Speaking of affixes, this week's are fortified, entangling and bolstering, but I'm pretty sure we don't need to worry about that one. Alright, I desperately wanted to redeem myself after that rather embarrassing dilly dirt. So the boss needed to go really well. And although I'm struggling with the priority list, and yes, I'm making a lot of mistakes that I'm aware of, it actually went okay. The boss was at 50% by the time the first lot of lashes were out, the group moved accordingly, and I made sure to focus the ad for interrupts, because as Bastion keeps reminding us, Never trust anyone. One minute and eight seconds later, the boss went down, and I was really gutted that the rogue just beat me at the end. Now, do you think Dilly did orbs at the bird? Of course not, don't be silly. But I did manage to just finish ahead of the rogue on damage. That felt good. Yeah, they were probably doing mechanics while I was just focusing on the boss. It's fine. We take those. However, I felt like I was struggling so much in terms of damage, especially AoE. So much that I had to inspect the rogue. I was curious of their gear. I was also intrigued because it's another spec I could play this season. As I'll be playing every melee class for my project melee thing I have going on for season 4. So is Outlaw good this season? Maybe I try it out. And if I do, you'll likely see it live on stream with every other melee class. So make sure you're following me over on Twitch if that's something you don't want to miss out on. And if you're enjoying the content so far, why not show your appreciation by leaving this video a like. On to Veximus, and this guy's gonna be a pug killer for sure. There's a few things that could go wrong that would just wipe the group. From not soaking the orbs to soaking too many, positioning the boss on top of where the orbs spawn, yeah I've seen it all, but this time it actually went alright. And yet again, single target seems to be where I performed a little better, but I still wasn't satisfied. It's something to work on. The last pull was an interesting one, a nice one when handled well, and this was only a 2, but I was super worried about pulling aggro so I just chilled to begin with, perhaps a little too much, and maybe the group took a little too long to take down, but it was fine in the end. The last boss, Dora Gosa, she's near enough the same as before, though at the start of the fight she now spawns two puddles that start launching orbs, and if you get hit by one of these orbs you'll gain a stacking debuff, and at 3 stacks of the debuff you'll spawn another puddle. Ideally you want to place these puddles on the edge of the room because the longer the fight goes on the less room you'll have and I can see this being a real pain in higher keys. It got a little hairy from time to time but we did take this boss down pretty quickly. We plus freed this key, gained 148 score but we didn't get any loot. And although I beat the rogue on all of the single target fights, obviously not counting the tree boss with all of that AoE, they completely destroyed me on overall damage which was rather sad. Dilly's got some work to do. The key we got from the Algophers Academy was a Brackenhide Hollow plus 5, and this is my favourite dungeon of the expansion. So I think it was fair to say that I was super happy to return to this place so early in the series too. I formed the group and we got started. In the previous key we had an Orc Evoker, so I only had one DPS to really compare myself to in terms of damage. This time however I have an Arms Warrior with the Legendary, I was pretty sure this guy was gonna destroy me. And the second DPS was a Shadow Priest, and I don't know if you've had a Shadow Priest in any of your groups so far this season, but they seem to be doing rather well. I don't look forward to this one. The first pack starts showing some early signs of just how bad my damage would be in comparison to the other DPS. Uh oh. At the same time I start to wonder, maybe the Ashes of Ember Soul Trinket is really damaging my output with the reduction to haste. It's obviously not the entire reason, I'm still making a lot of priority spell mistakes, but surely this isn't helping. We get to the first boss and this is where the fun begins, especially if you like killing your teammates on purpose. Yeah I never did that, you can't prove a thing. No, no wait stop. No, no. Sprocket save me, I killed Sprocket! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna pay for that. Sorry, Sprocket. The boss is progressing well. Everyone is kiting when targeted. The totem is being taken down, but I'm pretty sure the tank should block those. Oh no, he did a dilly. Whoopsie. On to Tree Mouth. And if the tank doesn't know how to block the charge ability on the first boss, do you think they know the soak mechanic on this one? Yeah, that was a no. Though apparently they haven't been here since season 1, so I'll let them off I guess. It's fine, we got this. 
The third boss went surprisingly well, nothing to really talk about with this one, but then we get to the last boss. Still missing a little bit of count, but we can do that afterwards. With two melee and one ranged DPS, I was praying for decent totem placement, otherwise we'd really struggle for damage. And as the group are rusty on mechanics, I wasn't incredibly hopeful. The first thing you don't want to do is stand in the boss's frontal ability. You also want to face it into the wall and nowhere near your party. I've totally never done that before. Then you want to kite the boss on the opposite side of the puddle, maximizing the time you have to kill the totem. Puddle, gas cloud, whatever you want to call it. If not, it will make your life incredibly hard. Unless your group are full of all range DPS, then just ignore me, I guess, and do whatever you want. But it's still good practice either way. Totem placement made the fight a little messy, but we still took this guy down. We were missing some count and I'm not sure if the group were prepared for the last pack, but this could have been a lot worse, as we've seen before in the past. So we end up timing this key, taking our total score to 339, but remain lootless in our Mythic Plus journey so far. Maybe next time. But if you can't wait for next time, perhaps check out Season 2's adventure on the Mistweaver Monk and find out just how bad these Brackenhide Hollow runs can be.